it going, folks? My name's Nick Otto, the Garden Cat. Somewhere behind me is my co-star, and this is the Tieta Permaculture Vlog. Uh, today, I'm going to talk a little bit about my chicken composting system. Just kind of give you guys a little bit of rundown because I got something kind of cool to show you. Uh, I just turned the compost pile two days ago, so I just want to kind of show you what's going on since then. And uh, I don't have much time again this morning. I have to head off to work, so it's just going to be a quick little one, hopefully today, uh, which I think most of you like anyway. So that's a good thing. So. Uh, a little bit wet right now. We just got a little bit of rain last night, so we'll take a look at that in just a second. And uh, again, I just want to say thanks. I'm over 100 subscribers now. I think I'm at like 111 at this point. I just want to say thanks to all of you guys who are watching these videos and supporting me and subscribing. It really means a lot to me to have that have that kind of support through the subscriptions, knowing that people are out there and wanting to see more of my stuff. So thank you so much for subscribing if you have already. If you haven't yet and you think and you think you might like my videos, maybe consider just subscribing. That's a That'd be a great way to help me or that or just sharing videos. It's, I'd really appreciate that. All right, let's get started. All right, we got some rain last night. Uh, I'm going to call that about a uh, quarter inch, uh, about just seven and a half mil. Be, or actually a quarter inch is more like six and a half mil. And uh, that's uh, because I didn't empty this yesterday and there's a, about 0.5 in here, uh, about you know one and a half mil down here. So 0 0.05, I mean. So. Some rain, enough rain for me not to have to think about watering, so that's always a plus anytime I don't have to think about watering. All right, heading on over to the chickens, get their feed ready. These guys were pretty anxious to get out this morning when I came out about a half hour ago just to let them out from their pen. I'm closing them up now in the coop because we lost a chick, so I am closing them. I usually don't close them up because uh, we just have yet to have real any predator pressure, predator pressure to, uh, to warrant that, but we lost a chick, so now I have to just be a little more careful. So. Uh, we are closing off, so I let them out in the morning, but I was about 20 minutes later than they usually get out, so they were a little bit antsy. Alright, heading on over to Henry. Here's our adopted chick. A little bit different than our my usual path. What? This is Henry down here. He's a local, a local chicken. One that's uh, more adapted to our tropical climate, which is great. Must work for me. He's quite happy to have his food. It's just again, this is soaked feed. That's what I'm feeding all my chicks right now is soaked feed. And he is separate because the current flock does not want to welcome him quite yet. So, or her. It's, his name's Henry, but I'm pretty sure it's a, a hen. So, uh, Henry the hen. Okay, heading into the regular flock now. Hey everyone. You go, Mama. All right, fresh foods and fresh, uh, really, this is chick water. I use this as my regular watering system um, for the chickens, but the chicks don't quite know how to use it yet, so I supplement that with the uh, kind of more standard water. All right, so let's uh, let's talk about this chicken compost. Um, so it's not actually like me composting chickens. That's not what it is. It's a uh, it's a system where I'm building a compost pile within the chicken pen. So to do, there's a couple reasons I'm doing that, um, and I'll share a few of those with you. Um, one is because I can do less work. Uh, once I build the pile and the pile is kind of up to temperature a few times, the chickens will end up spreading it out for me. They'll be aerating it when they do that. Um, and so they're kind of helping me process the pile. So I have to do a little bit less work. So instead of me having to turn the pile every couple of days, I just pile it up, let them spread it out as much as they want to. And then I'll repile the pile in about, you know, between five and seven days after that. So basically means less work for me. So that's always a positive. It also allows, the compost pile to serve as a feed. So compost, uh, once if you have good compost, it's actually really active in microbiological life. It also attracts all, you know, basically the predators of those small, the bacteria and the fungi, all the predators of those things start to come to your pile. And as those things start to come to your pile, they attract even bigger predators, etc. So basically it goes from the very tiny things that are like the focus of what your compost pile is for. You're really trying to breed the fungi and the bacteria. And then everything that feeds on them will start coming to the pile. And everything that feeds on the things that feed on them will come to the pile. If you see what I mean, it's basically the food web. It's a food pyramid, like one trophic level after another one. So um, what ends up happening is uh, bugs and worms and everything end up coming into the compost pile to start eating all the microbes within the pile. And those bugs and everything are eaten by the chickens. So 
Uh, having compost within your chicken pen can actually supplement your feed by quite a bit. There's actually, a, there's a guy up in, I think, Maine or Vermont or somewhere up in the kind of the Northeast. He actually feeds his, his chickens 100% on compost. Uh, he does have a commercial composting system, so that's a, that's a little bit of a bigger thing, but he has a huge amount of birds and they're 100% fed, 100% from the compost. He doesn't add any grain or anything like that. Uh, I'll leave that video linked above. Uh, it was from when Justin Rhodes was doing his uh, uh, great american farm tour so uh, it was a while ago but it's it's a really cool video to see all these chickens on these massive compost piles um, so pretty cool but basically the point being that uh, compost can actually serve as a major food source for your for your hens and for your roosters if you have that so if you have a small pen a small backyard system um, integrating the compost within it can actually help save you feed costs, can help save you uh, time and energy of composting. So basically, if you have compost within your chickens, you have a small system, it might actually be worth you trying to uh, create a compost pile within your chicken pen because you're basically integrating systems. So that's a really good, uh, that's a good permaculture kind of principle is integrate rather than segregate. So instead of having separate systems that you have to, all, you have to manage completely separately each single time, so managing the compost pile is one task, managing the chickens is another task, is there a way for you to integrate those systems so that it's a little bit easier for you to manage and also it might be to the benefit of the system as a whole. So in this case, a chicken compost, they compost pile within a uh, chicken pen. So what, what are the, what's kind of the pros and cons of that? So the cons basically are that it's possible that you uh, will have some sort of pathogenic material from the, uh, from the chicken manure in your compost pile if they happen to manure right before you start harvesting the compost. So there's a potential negative, but that's usually uh, outweighed by the fact that if there is that there, all those aerobic microbiology down there, they tend to outcompete the bad guys, which tend to be the pathogens. So if you do have a little bit there and you end up spreading it, it's not going to be you know the end of the world. Again, birds come on your garden and, the, and they manure on your garden on a regular basis without you even knowing. So um, you do have to be careful about that, but as long as it's not like huge amounts of manure everywhere, you shouldn't really have a problem too much. Another potential negative is you don't have too much control of your pile because the chickens are all, all, all over it. You can actually counteract that by using a, a little bit of a hardware cloth or, or welded wire fence fencing of some sort. Basically, you can put it around your compost pile when it's first getting going to make sure it actually heats up to temperature and you can control a little bit. So you can actually keep it in a pen and then leave it for like, you know, a few days a week, depending on how long, what your system is, how, how what kind of compost you're trying to achieve. Um, and then when you want the chickens to interact with it, you just remove the fence and then you can have them go at it. Personally, I'm not doing that. I probably could benefit from that because they, uh, they're scratching quite intensely. I'm about to show you. Um, but yeah, so those are a couple negatives, potential negatives. Um, again, these are all potentials. So I have yet to find a, a major negative uh, from this system um, in my experience so far. So the positives are one, the, the chickens end up turning the compost pile for you, more or less. Uh, they're not really turning it per se, they're scratching it out. But in doing so, they're exposing all those little bits of parts of the compost pile to air. So they're actually aerating your pile for you. Um, they are spreading it out so it becomes less of a pile uh, per se, but it does uh, basically, they continue to work through there. Um, it's a positive because they're eating what's in there. So you're supplementing their feed. You have less of a feed bill and they're eating healthy food, what they want to be eating, the insects, high in protein. Um, they really want to be eating that stuff. That's what they naturally are looking for when they're out scratching throughout the forest floor and everything. So uh, this is pretty much giving them their natural food source, what they really want to be eating. And you're basically growing that food source at the same time as building a compost pile. So that kind of goes hand in hand there. Um, the other nice thing is if you do have weed seeds, if your compost didn't quite heat up enough to uh, get rid of all your weed seeds, the chickens are actually going to go through there, find those weed seeds likely and, and eat them or move them away. Or, you know, they usually like to, all those seeds uh, tend to be eaten by chickens. So probably not all, there's probably some seeds they won't eat, but um, a lot of seeds, it kind of helps you get rid of those. And then you can sort of weed re regrowth. Like if here I have goitre, which is like a, it's like a, an herb that just loves to grow in like really moist environments. And uh, it, uh, it'll just keep re-sprouting and re-sprouting if it's in the compost pile and it doesn't get uh, to the center of the pile and really destroyed by all that heat. So uh, the chickens, if it does start re-sprouting, they start eating it. So they're gonna keep on eating the stuff that I don't really want in my pile um, and just help me manage the pile that way. Here's another negative that I haven't talked about yet, but if you have a hen that's raising chicks and is really feisty, she will constantly fight you every time you come in here to try to do anything with a compost. So 
that is a potential negative for you. But in a way, it's just her being a good mama, so I, I can't really be that mad at her. Um, it's just kind of something I have to deal with in my system. <laughs> Uh, but look at this here. So I don't know if you've seen this one yet, guys. This is a this is a tropical weed. If any of you are in the tropics, this whatever this is growing right here makes these small little green berries. Um, and these berries, the chickens love, which means it's probably edible for us. But let's see. I'll throw it down to Mama to try to appease her. And you see, immediately she grabs it. And of course, other Mama's going to try to take it, and she does. This is what happens all the time. This mama wants to be the one in charge, not give the other mama. I just gave it to her and you took it. Come on. Anyway, back to the compost pile. So integrating the system just makes your life a little bit easier. You're, you're saving space too. If you have to have a separate space to process your compost versus having it within your chicken coop, um, that's just, it's another like space saver. Um, and really it just, it just gives them something to do. It gives them something to keep active. Uh, the chickens like to be active. They like to be scratching. They like to be looking for food. And by uh, creating a compost pile within your chicken pen, you're actually allowing them to have exactly what they want while also serving you the benefit of creating compost. So you do have to manage it a little bit, but uh, it's a little bit less management than you would have to be doing if you're doing a full compost pile and you're turning every other day, etc. So um, just two days ago, I think I put out a video on uh, kind of the indicators of a healthy compost pile and I'll leave that linked above. Um, and that was just two days ago and I repiled the pile. So what happens with in my system here is that I build a pile, the chickens get up on it, they scratch it out, they basically uh, take it from a pile and just make a big old flat area where there's a bunch of organic material. And then when it gets to that point, I repile it up into a pile and then they do that again. And that's just kind of the process over and over again. Typically, when you first get started, they're not going to scratch it as much. There's not as much microbial life in there. There's not as much of the bugs that are coming to the pile quite yet. As the pile matures, they start to get way more interested in the pile itself. So just two days ago, I turned the pile and I had a full pile. And now this is what I'm left with. Absolutely no pile. Everything's completely spread out. And it was actually spread out yesterday. So less than, uh, it was probably like maybe 24 hours after I repiled the pile is pretty much completely spread out. So this will be an instance where having some sort of uh, some sort of uh, hardware cloth or or just kind of fencing around it to keep them out for a little bit so we can actually kind of reestablish itself might be a good idea. But my pile has already gone through uh, three turns that had, uh, had the temperature go up to above 140 degrees. So that's what I'm looking for to make sure that I get all those pathogens and everything. If you want more information on building a compost pile, I also made a video on building a compost pile. I'll leave that linked above here. Um, and then right after that, I have linked at the end of that video how to turn a compost pile and when to turn a compost pile, another video. So lots of compost videos is what I'm really passionate about. So I'm gonna to try to produce a lot of those for you. So the chickens, have taken this pile that was repiled and it was piled right here where it's kind of these, these sticks are right here right next to where the rooster's standing that's where the pile was and at this point it's literally spread out over this entire area so let's just take a look at it real quick down here just to see how we're doing um this is starting to really look like nice solid compost you can see there's still lots of organic big bulky organic material in there so it's not done yet oh, it looks like there's a little piece of tape there or something from uh, something that got put in there. It always happens. But yeah, so this is that coitre I was talking about. So this stuff will keep re-sprouting and re-sprouting, but what's nice is if it is in my compost pile, then the chicks keep eating all of the, the sprouting bits, all the green bits that are, do re-sprout. And that prevents this thing from actually ever getting anywhere because it can't actually produce sugars to uh, do the photosynthesis or anything like that because it doesn't have leaves. So. Um, looking into this pile, you can see I just moved this pile a little bit and look, mama came right over because she knows that this is where all the goodness is. This is where all the good stuff is within the pile. I'm a little bit worried. I feel like she's about to attack me. But at the same time, this mama used to be very cuddly. She used to walk up to me and just want to cuddle it right into my, so I'm kind of, oh, look at her. She's kind of doing it. I was like hoping that she might actually get a little bit cuddly with me. Hi, mama. I think she's, she's finally starting to remember me and remember that I'm not a, a threat to her. She just crawled right up on my lap here and just hanging out with me. So this is what she used to do before she had chicks. She used to be very cuddly. She used to come right up to me and want to be around me all the time. So it's kind of cool that I'm seeing it again. It kind of gives me hope that I might get her back to that state. Oh, no, she's, 
You might have heard a very loud scratch there because she just pecked at the microphone. I'm just gonna give her a second because she hasn't done this for a while and I don't wanna give her the, the illusion that she, she's not like able to do this or this is dangerous for her because I really want her to stop pecking at me all the time when I'm in here. So just bear with me for a second. I don't know if she's trying to, she's trying to be, oh, there she goes, now she's attacking me again. Well, it lasted for a little while, a little bit of cuddles. I help, I'm holding up a handful of this compost and she's picking through it looking for things. So this is what they do. They'll scratch through this, they're looking for the little, the insects and everything that are in there. I actually have both mamas down here now, pecking around it. Okay, you gonna go be with your chicks now? Okay. Again, the downside of having a chicken pen, or your compost in a chicken pen is if you have a mama who's very feisty and wants to protect her chicks at all costs, you might get pecked at a lot. But I'm okay with it. So back to looking at the pile, hopefully, if mama gives me a break. Everything down here, it's actually warm down here. It's not hot um, quite yet, but it's probably like right down where my hand is, it's starting to get pretty warm. Um, that's because this pile did heat up again after I turned it. So when I turned it the other day, uh, when we finished, it was right around 100 degrees. And the, the first time I could check it, I saw it up to about 110, 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and then I, when I came back later in the day, it was completely spread out. So I couldn't check the temperature again. The, the thermometer has actually fallen on the ground because they had spread it out so much. But you can see right here, this right here, this looks a lot like a finished compost. It can definitely go a little bit longer because there's still a bunch of chunkiness to it. But you could sift this right out and it's probably done. And at this point, I think it's been processing for about three-ish weeks. So um, it's at the point now where if everything went perfectly right, we actually would probably have finished compost. So um, this is so great because the chickens are doing this all this, most of this work for me. They're picking through here, picking out any like weed seeds that I don't want in here. Um, you can see there's mom over there working on it. And uh, they're helping me get this pile and break this pile down um, to the point where it's usable as compost. And we're really close to that already. And again, I didn't, I'm not having to do much work here because the chickens are doing most of it for me. I'm gonna do a really quick smell test of this. Yeah, we're starting to get that, uh, starting to get that kind of forest floor smell, which means we're starting to get that fungal growth happening and lots of humic acid production in there. And uh, that's gonna be the telltale sign that it's pretty much done and that I have a decent amount of fungi in here. There's still a lot of woody bits, so that's how I know that we're not quite done yet. The fungi have not taken over yet because there's lots of like big woody chunks in here. And those do take the longest to break down, but if you have a big fungal growth um, within your pile, it shouldn't take like extremely long. You know, it's gonna take maybe a month or so to actually get to that point. But um, so the more I let this, I let this keep going, the, the better chance I have at actually having a nice completely finished fungal dom fungal compost, maybe a fungal dominated, but uh, more fungi than would be in a pile that you're just uh, constantly turning. So the more you turn your pile, the more you're breaking up the fungal, the fungal hyphae strands um, within your compost pile, which is fine if you're turning it to make sure you get pile. And if you want more of a bacterial dominated, the more you turn it, the less fungi will take over. For me personally, I want more fungi in my soil because the more fungi that are in your soil, the better, uh, kind of basically the more structure your soil is gonna end up having and uh, more nutrient cycling is possible. And it also tends to uh, prefer more of a, uh, a longer term crop system. So the, the brassicas and everything like that, those like really short lived uh, annual vegetables, they tend to like the, uh, they tend to like more of a bacterial dominated soil. But most other things, longer term, tomatoes and, and peppers and anything like that, that's basically not a brassica, they tend to like a little bit more fungi in their soil. Um, the brassicas tend to be like first stage succession, then after them come the rest of those kind of vegetable things, if you're thinking about successional planting within your garden. Um, so more, most of the stuff that I want to be growing, uh, I want to have a little bit more fungi in the soil. So that's what I'm trying to grow here in my compost pile is more fungi. Um, and typically that's most crops and it's really dependent on the crop you want. If you're growing trees, you want a lot of fungi in your soil, uh, hugely fungal dominated soil, um, and therefore hugely fungal dominated compost. That's what you're looking for. So really the, the best way to find out what, how much is in your soil is actually look at it through a microscope. 
So that's on my to-do list is actually to get a microscope. I'm hopefully gonna be getting that somewhat soon. Um, and then I'll be able to actually take the compost and look at it under the microscope with you guys and kind of show you if it's actually performing well, if it's not performing well, what do I got in there, if it's high quality compost or not so good. So that's in the future. Um, and I definitely wanna do that with my chicken system because uh, I just wanna see what the interaction of the chickens do to the compost pile. Like, is it actually helping it? Is it causing more pathogens to be there? Are they actually helping cause less pathogens because they're aerating? More information I'm still gonna be finding out for you guys and I'll be updating you on in future videos for sure. So that's it, that's the chicken compost uh, system I have in my, in my pen here. It's basically you just build a compost pile within the chickens and you let them help you manage it. And uh, that's, uh, that's kind of the name of the game there. Um, it is, this, this specific system is inspired by Jeff Lawton's chicken tractor system. Um, he has a really cool system where it's basically this exact same thing. I basically mimicked the size of the pen and everything on, on, a, on his system and just kind of adapted it to the materials I have available and uh, also uh, just my, my, my context here in uh, how, much, how much input I can put into it, what materials I have, etc. So uh, just remember that when you're, when you're figuring out what you want to do on your property and, and on your site, uh, whether it be compost or gardening or whatever it is, um, Follow people uh, that are that are doing it to get an inspiration and to kind of get the the kind of the bare bone structure of what your system's going to look like, but then evolve it for your own needs because not one person has all the answers and a lot of times uh, something that works where you know in one expert's area and one expert's climate and one expert's context with the, what they have available, the materials they have, the money they have to invest in it that may not work for you and your system, right? So just make sure that you're really keeping that in mind and keep in mind that uh, you're gonna likely know and find, well, you'll learn for sure, but you'll likely figure out what the best system is for your site and for your context, for how much work you can, you can put into it, for the amount of chickens you have, for instance, in this chicken compost system. If I had any more chickens in this, I'd probably need to definitely fence it in because they would just spread out the pile way too fast for me to even have any chance of controlling it or getting it up to the temperatures I want it to be at, right? So um, at this point, I'm okay without a fence, but once we get these chicks grow up and we have a little bit more uh, chick action, may need to be uh, thinking about adding a fence in here. So, or a little it's a gate around the compost pile just to kind of exclude them for a little bit of time while the compost processes before I let them at it. So, um, yeah, it's just something I wanted to mention is it's always learn from, learn from the experts, learn from the people who are doing it and doing similar things, but just know that you're gonna be the one that's managing your system. So you need to make sure it works for you. My co-star, you finally decided to show up. Finally decided to show up right at the end, bud. Say hello to everyone. This is Otto the garden cat. He's a good boy, except that he is uh, very keen on uh, hunting our new addition, Henry. He's actually down in behind the other fence over there, eating some greens down there. So you can see this guy, he's very interested in checking out that chick. He's, uh, he's chased her a few times and I've had to kind of forcefully remove him a couple times. He's not like that too much, but you know, that's life. That's what you get when you're trying to eat my chicks, you know? All right, that's it for me, guys. I appreciate you watching. Uh, if you do like what I'm doing, please subscribe or share these videos, especially the compost videos. If you guys have anyone out there who's trying to get started in compost or has some questions about compost, share my videos because that allows them to see that and then also leave questions and comments below there and I'll love to answer those. So um, please do feel free to share that and, and to subscribe and anything else you may, may wish to do. And uh, yeah, until next time, have a good one.